jacket. On the ground! Get on the ground! RV Mike 3085. Some people think they are above the law and can get away with what they want. Unfortunately for them, reality hits them harder than usual when these entitled thieves realize they've been arrested. All right, man, get out. Turn around, put your hands behind your back, all right? Yes, sir. Hands behind your back. I just want to take this backpack off, all right? Relax your hands, relax your hands, relax your hands. Relax your hands. Relax your hands. Relax your hands. There, now put them back together. Police officers responded to a call from a scrapyard, complaining about a man who was trespassing. The officers arrived at the scene and were informed by a manager that they found the suspect in the back seat of a vehicle. The employees trapped the suspect in the car by using a forklift to raise it high in the air. Officers made their way to the scene and proceeded to arrest the man after the vehicle was lowered. He broke into a car at the uh, junkyard, and before he could get out, they got like the forklift, and they had him, I'm not kidding, like 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> All right. Can you get out of the, can you back up? Thank you. Can you get back, sir, just in case? Officers respond to a call from a scrapyard concerning an act of trespassing. They arrive at the junkyard and meet the manager who informs them that the employees trapped the suspect by raising the vehicle he was in using a forklift. The officers made their way to the scene and surrounded the vehicle. The forklift operator slowly lowered the vehicle, and the officers opened the door. They instructed the suspect, a 26-year-old man named Alexander Funk, to step out of the vehicle. The officers took off Funk's backpack and proceeded to put him in handcuffs. They take off his hoodie and ask for his name, to which he replies. He refuses to tell them his full name and says it's none of their business. They inform him that he is under arrest, but he claims not to know what he did wrong. My name is Mr. Funk, bro. Yeah, what's a lie and now you're under arrest? I, uh, what's a lie? I don't know. What are you talking about? My name is Mr. Funk, bro. That's not a lie, sir. Yeah, so and don't call me a liar, bro. Relax your I'm, I am relaxed, bro. Okay, so when, when you're... And, and so when I'm what, bro? I'm literally running from someone, bro. You don't know me, bro. Let, let's walk back here. I think so. Yeah. Do you have any yeah, I No, I don't. No, I'm hiding from all this okay. shit. I know where to go. You guys arrest me for that. I'm just asking. Yeah, I thought. You're I not asking me. You're asking me my name. Yeah, I know. I don't know what. I don't have anything on me that's gonna hurt you because I don't have a gun and a taser like y'all. All right, cool. Yeah. Do you know him? Funk informs the officers that he was running from someone before entering the junkyard. They inform him that he is compelled to provide a means of identification to prove his identity. Funk says he doesn't have an ID and the officers again ask for his real name. He says his name is Mr. Funk, but the officers think he is lying. He instructs the officer not to call him a liar and says he is running from someone. Funk says the officers don't know him and don't know what he is going through. He begins cussing at the officers as they escort him back to a patrol vehicle. Funk yells at the officers and says he isn't possessing any dangerous items like they do. He continues saying he was being chased by someone and had to run into the junkyard. That's the third time I've caught that guy in here. Yeah, he uh, he's he's once. got warrants for all this stuff. So I caught him, I caught him once and let him go. Let him get the out of here. I'll never come back. And about yeah. a month later, he's I got was putting it. the car in the shop. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's all his tools. Yep. I was putting the car in the shop, and he was in the back seat. And we called the police on you guys. Did you guys to get here? And he shoved one of my guys out of the way and took off running. You sleeping in the car? I was sleeping. Yes, sir. I was all this running from someone and I was drying out. Yeah, yeah I'm still where are you running from. I don't even know these people. I don't even know who they are. Why do you got a sawzall? Um, He's got a whole bunch of other stuff. For work. For, for work. Where do you work at? Well, I've, I haven't been uh, able to get a job for a while now, so I'm kind of working on my own. An officer returns to Funk's backpack and searches it. A manager arrives and says that's the third time they're catching him in the junkyard. They realize he has several warrants on him. Officers continue asking for his name and threaten to arrest him for lying. They eventually run his name through their database and realize his name is actually Alexander Funk. Surprisingly, Funk wasn't lying about his name. The officers ask Funk if he understands that his actions are illegal. 
an officer searches him to ensure he doesn't possess any dangerous or illegal items. Funk continues his story about being chased into the junkyard. An officer asks why he has a saw in his bag, and Funk says he uses it for work. He hasn't been able to get a job for a while, so he works on his own. Who knows what he actually uses the saw for? All right, man, well, here's the deal. This lot has been, uh, there's having a, a serious amount of break-ins and converters cut off, and you got a sawzaw, and you're in the private area of the business that's not open to the public. Yes, sir. So, uh... You know what I mean? I don't, I don't cut converters or anything like Never that. done, well, never they, cut they a converter. They have knowledge of chasing them off the property. Never so. once, never once have I ever cut a converter, ever. Uh, I've, I've had one chase off before from here. Well, yes, you, not gonna lie. When was that? Last year. When the cops ask you your name in these situations, it's not an option. And Mr. Funk, yes, sir. his first name, last name, date of birth, so understood? Yep, yeah, understood, sir. An officer explains that the junkyard has experienced a serious number of break-ins, and previous suspects have used saws to cut off and steal parts of vehicles. Funk was caught in private property that's not open to the public. He was also caught with a saw, matching the equipment used by previous suspects. Funk talks about a previous encounter with a junkyard employee and claims to have also been sleeping in a vehicle. He insists that he never stole anything, and the officers enlighten him on how to answer questions when being interrogated by officers. Hey brother, come on out. Come on, Mr. Funk. Switch these handcuffs out. Turn, turn around and face the car, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Turn. What am I doing with this point? Uh, criminal trespass and criminal. Stop. 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 Hey, we'll just, hey, we'll just get Don't these. Uh, Stop. Uh, I'll see me after this. Uh, after the next. Yep. I don't want to go to jail. You said I'm not going to jail. I'll chill out. I just can't be going to jail for nothing like this, dude. I'm seriously running from people you don't even know. The officers open the patrol vehicle and instruct Funk to step out. They attempt to change his handcuffs and begin telling him what he is charged for. Funk begins hitting his head on the vehicle, but the officers rush to stop him. They decide to move him to a different vehicle, but he says they are trying to arrest him for a crime he didn't commit. He says he doesn't want to go to jail because of the people who are after him. The officers transport Funk to jail for further processing. Funk was charged with trespassing on private property and possession of criminal tools. They're gonna push me. I pushed no, you. I yeah, you did. I did not push you. I yes, pushed you the door and you hurt in my arm. I'm not resisting. All right, you, stop, you, stop you moving. You've been resisting the whole time. No, I didn't. You didn't even grab me. That is hurting me. This incident occurred in Illinois on June 27th, 2023. Officers responded to a call from a Target supermarket. They complained about two women who had stolen over $1,000 of merchandise. Officers arrived at the scene and approached the women who matched the employee's description. The women immediately denied the allegations, but were caught not long after. The officers proceeded to place them under arrest. One of the women claimed to be pregnant, as if the pregnancy was an excuse to steal merchandise that doesn't belong to you. Okay, well they just said you took over a thousand bucks worth of stuff from them, so you got an ID? No. Give me a name then. Lock your door. They can't do that. This is their merchandise. No, it's Damn. right. This is not their merchandise. Lock your door. Okay. An officer responds to a call from a Target supermarket complaining about two women who had just stolen their merchandise. The officers arrived at the scene and approached the women in the parking lot, placing items in their vehicles. They ask the women if they stole any items from the store, but they immediately deny the allegations. The officer says the merchandise they are accused of stealing is worth over a thousand dollars. He asks the women for their means of identification, but they say they don't have any. An officer walks to the vehicle to search it but one of the women blocks him and closes the door. The officer decides to arrest her for obstructing his attempt to search the vehicle. The woman claims she didn't do anything. The officer says she pushes him out of the way. The woman suddenly says she is pregnant and that the handcuffs are hurting her arms. The officers instruct her to stop resisting arrest. Too many times while you're pregnant. Let, let me go, you don't know what I did. I didn't do you're, you're not being let go. Alright, don't, don't have anybody inside? So just stop that, don't even ask. Okay, can you LP's let me go? supposed to be on the way out. Can you please let me go? Yeah. I'm not resisting. No, I'm correct. pregnant. You already did resist once. We're not going to let you go. I pushed the door. Can you let me please no. untighten this? No. no. 
I'm not gonna be quiet. Okay. Can you? Well, I'm pregnant. Can you, while you're hollering at me. Can you please untie no, me? Okay. I'm pregnant. Please. No. I'm not resisting arrest. Let me go. I can't go nowhere. God damn. You're going to our station. That's fine. Do I got a choice at this point? No, you Absolutely, you do not. Because you made exactly. your own choice prior to that. I don't give a I'm talking about. The officers hold the woman and she reminds them she is pregnant. They instruct her to stop committing crimes while pregnant. The woman says they should let her go because she didn't do anything. She continues asking the officers to release her because of her pregnancy and says she won't resist them again. The officers decide to adjust her handcuffs to make them more comfortable. They escorted her to a patrol vehicle and placed her in the back seat. The officer informs her she is going to the station and she asks if she has a choice. He informs her that she doesn't, and she made her choices prior to her arrest. He straps her into the seat and shuts the door. You seem to work like a more reasonable one. I'd like to hear from you as to what's going on. I mean, is there any reason why this is happening today? I got her work and get her right to the store. What was that? I just got her work and get her right to the store. Anything else in the car that you guys already loaded up? She said that, uh, she, I heard her, she said that uh, the stuff in the car is because she's moving. So far. So is anything in this car yours? No. It's all hers. Okay. We're obviously going to research and track down all this stuff, but is this stuff that she stole as well? Or did you guys steal this together? No. What, what is all this stuff that's in the car? I mean, so I, I, I know that people don't just buy a bunch of shoes and clothes and just leave it in their trunk. They just don't, they just don't do that. No, they don't. So what, where did this stuff come from, to the best of your knowledge? Well, we got a lot of this stuff out of her mom's house. Like I said, she said she's moving. So her mom stayed not too far from here. And we just like load this stuff out. The officers approach the second woman, who appears to be more cooperative. They begin questioning her about the incident, and she confirms that the vehicle used to move the stolen items belongs to her. She also confirmed that they didn't try to scan any of the items and just walked out with them. They ask her if there is anything in the vehicle that's illegal and she says there isn't. The officers thank her for her cooperation and she says she doesn't have a reason to lie. They move close to her vehicle and proceed to search the trunk. They see several items in the trunk and the woman explains that her colleague's mom is moving, so they are assisting. She says her colleague wanted to stop at Target while they moved the items and they ended up in their current situation. Um, whoever takes the majority of the responsibility, I don't know yet, but the bottom line is you knew she was stealing. Yeah. And you guys were together. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the video is going to show you both putting stuff in the shopping cart. Yes. Right. So you both are going to have some responsibility. But again, the level of that responsibility is still up in the air. Um, depends on if you've, how many times you've been, if you've been arrested before for retail theft. That matters. Um, I haven't, we can get into that later. Um, the level of your co you know, the level of your cooperation that matters as well. The state attorneys are are they're looking for reasons to um, I don't want to say give breaks because everyone's going to be held responsible to some extent. The woman proceeds to ask the officer if there's a way to return the items and not get into any trouble. The officer informs her that the items were stolen and her friend was causing trouble, so the case must be addressed. Both women will be responsible for the theft but her level of cooperation can help her get a lesser punishment. They return to the allegedly pregnant woman who is still irritated. She says she can only be blunt and says she didn't do anything to the officer. She says she's a human and doesn't deserve for her wrist to be twisted up to her neck. The officer says respect must go both ways and informs the woman that she will be handled by other officers for the rest of the night. The woman insists on being respected by the officers. They decide to move her to a different patrol vehicle. Both women were charged with retail theft while the woman who was pregnant was additionally charged with resisting arrest. What is wrong with you? Okay. Yeah, I guess. Oh yeah, that's right. You wanna grab You wanna grab her stuff? Go grab leave me alone. I go to jail for what? For being in possession of shopping cart, man. You... Whatever, you just let your snitch loose. What? You just let that white <laughs> go. What? And I go to jail for a shopping cart. No, you actually. Okay, all right. Go. Okay. Okay. Ouch. Cool. 
Why am I gonna be on that? Why am I gonna be on that? No, you are. Take me to jail for a shopping cart. Take me to jail. The incident in this body cam footage occurred on September 21st, 2023, in Pinellas Park, Florida. An officer approaches a homeless woman, who can be seen moving around with a shopping cart. Several items are in the cart, and the cart is stolen. The woman begins shouting at the officer as he moves to her and eventually pushes everything to the ground. The officer decides to place the woman under arrest, and she begins screaming as he puts the handcuffs on her. Leave me alone! Give me a hand now! <laughs> Body cam footage shows an officer approaching a homeless woman who is moving around with a cart. The woman suddenly begins yelling at him and eventually walks away. Some bystanders laugh with the officer as they witness what happens. The officer calls for backup as he walks to the woman. The homeless woman begins throwing all the items from the cart. The cart is an item she stole from the store. The officer decides to place the woman under arrest. The woman makes strange noises as the officer asks what her problem is. She cusses at him as his partner arrives. The officer asks his partner to get the woman's belongings and accompanies her to the patrol vehicle. The woman instructs the officers to leave her alone and asks why they are arresting her. The officer informs her she is being arrested for being in possession of a store's item. Whatever, you just let your snitch loose. What? You just let that white go. What? And I go to for a shopping cart. No, you actually... Okay, alright. Go off. Okay. Take me to jail for a shopping cart. Take me to jail. Well, who... Oh my... I just died Who's fault for is that? my sister. Whose fault is that? Leave me alone, you. You caused all of this. You no, I didn't. Did. No, I didn't. You were causing the disturbance. No, I wasn't. Yes, he was talking at the gas station. You were causing disturbance at the Leave gas station. Me alone. The homeless woman begins complaining because the office let the bystanders go. She continues cussing at him as they approach the patrol vehicles. The officer laughs as the woman continues yelling and she says she won't go to jail over a shopping cart. She claims the items in the cart are for her sister and asks the officer to leave her alone. The officer informs her she is the cause of her arrest because of the disturbance she caused. They have had discussions over her attitude several times. The second officer arrives with the shopping cart and all the items. They decide to return them to the store they were stolen from. I, uh, see if they got a female officer. For what? I don't do drugs. I need it. I gotta search you. Do you want to hold on to her since you got gloves on? I'll give you some gloves. Yeah. yeah. Leave it alone. Oh, take it off. Oh, okay. All right. All right so that's not going to help your situation. Yeah. I don't give a All right, Ms. Gauss, uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or present with you. I'll be in question. The officer asks his partner if they can get a female officer to search the homeless woman. The woman says she doesn't do drugs and they don't need to search her. The second officer holds the homeless woman and prevents her from escaping while the other one puts on his gloves. They take off her bag as she screams, curses, and says they should leave her alone. They put her in the car and read her rights. The officer asks her if she has permission from the store to take the shopping cart and why she continues. The homeless woman says she takes the cart because she has broken ribs. The guy from the store waved me down because I could see you cussing him out. That's why I came to make contact with you. The, your response shouldn't be when an officer tells you, you know, that girl that you had pulled over. Pulled over where? Right there with you to go. We you went with the big girl. She wasn't pulled over. I look over and I can see the the businessman, uh, the business employee yelling at, or yelling for me to come over, and I can see you sitting at the sidewalk pointing and yelling back at him. Why? Why are you saying that it's you you in there talking about he's not from this country and all this stuff like that's why are you why can't you just leave? If you would have just left, I probably wouldn't even make contact with you. But you over here with you you walking away, you got a shopping cart, you yelling at this guy, causing disturbance. The two people you had pulled over. Yeah. The officer informs the woman that the incident began when someone from the store waved him down. He noticed that she was cussing the employee and had to approach her to understand what was happening. 
The woman complains about a woman the officer pulled over, and the officer says they were bystanders talking about homeless placement services. He asked why she didn't leave the store alone and continued cussing the employee. Uh, we got to do better. Uh, we need to get you off the street, for one, probably. That's probably your response when an officer makes contact with you is probably not to run off. The officer says they need to get the homeless woman off the street. He informs her that her response to an approaching officer shouldn't be to run off. She can be charged for doing such, but the officer chooses not to. He calls her attempt at running the slowest getaway he has ever seen and laughs about it. The officer has encountered the woman in the past and says other officers might not be as lenient as he is. The homeless woman says she wants them to arrest the woman, who was a bystander, and the officer says they need a reason to put him away. The woman was eventually charged with misdemeanor theft. This incident occurred in Rio Rancho on October 16, 2023. Officers responded to a call from a credit union informing them that someone attempted to cash in a stolen check. The officers approached the woman, who matched the employee's description as she tried to drive away. They informed her she was being detained and proceeded to read her rights. She was later identified as Debriana Ryle. The officers told her she was being detained for attempting to cash a stolen check. Debriana denied the allegations and said the check was her payment for helping a woman clean her garage. Were you trying to cash a check? Oh yeah. Did you get your check? No, they have it. They have it and you yeah. just left? Yeah, I just, just left. Okay. You just you didn't ask for the check back? You, no, no, no. She, he told me that he's going to go ahead and give Mary a call because um, they're going to hold on to it. Okay. So that's what he told me. Who's Mary? Mary was the girl that paid me for working. Okay. Where does she, where do you work for? Um, just, I did her, was working in her yard. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to read you something, okay? okay? You are being detained right now. Oh, okay. Do you understand your rights? Yes. Do you, with those rights in mind, do you want to talk to me? Go ahead and step out for me. And I'll tell you what's going on, okay? Yeah. I just want to—I just want you to know your rights. Okay. So the call that we got was mm -hmm. that somebody was cashing a stolen check. Body cam footage shows officers responding to a call from a credit union. The union reported that a woman attempted to cash in a stolen check. Officers arrived on the scene and found a woman matching the employee's description. They stopped the woman from leaving the area and instructed her to park her car. The woman, named Debriana Ryle, obeyed the officers and parked her vehicle. They asked her if she was trying to cash a check, and she confirmed. He asks if they returned the check, and Debriana says the employees decided to hold on to it while contacting a woman called Mary. Debriana says Mary is the woman who employed her. The officer informs Debriana that she is being detained and reads her rights. He asks Debriana to step out of her vehicle, and she does. The officer tells her the employees called and reported that someone was attempting to cash a stolen check where is that? Where is that lady work? I mean, it's her address. It's her, uh, her home. Uh, her home? Yeah. What do you do for her? I was just helping clean the yard and throw some trash from her. Where is that address at? Um, I don't know it off by heart, but I have it at my house. Right you now. have it at your house? Yeah. All the checks were stolen from your home? Okay, so about three days ago? You did not write any check to Debriana Rael? No. That, does, that name doesn't ring a bell at all? No, not at all. Okay. Debriana informs the officers that the check was payment for work she did. She was helping someone clean their garage and got paid for it. The officers enter the building and listen to a call from the owner of the check. She informs them that someone broke into her home and stole several items. They ask if she wrote a check to Debriana, but the woman says she doesn't know who they are talking about. She also says she and her husband haven't written a check in a long time. They ask the woman if she wants to press charges against Debriana, and she says she does. Do you have your ID with you? I do. So that's why we're here, okay? That's Not, crazy. I want you to know your rights too, and that's why I'm letting you know why we're here, okay? That's crazy. How do you come in contact with your phone number or what? Phone number. Do you have a phone number right now? Um, my phone number? Hers. Yeah. Do you have your address? Um, yeah, if you, you should be like on history or something. Yeah. You might call it if you, there's no way you can get it. Where, do you know if like the street? I mean, if you were yeah. there last week, you got it. Yeah, I was, I was only for like three, four days. The woman informs the officers that Debriana should be able to tell them where she got the check from. They decide to call the woman back once they are done with their investigation. The officers returned outside and asked Debriana for her identification. Debriana also gives them Mary's number, and they ask if Mary can confirm that she gave Debriana the check. 
The officer asks for Mary's address, and Debriana says she doesn't have enough mobile data to look it up on her phone. She claims not to remember the area because she worked there only a few days. How much does she pay? Six hundred dollars for three days? No, three days. It's like five. It's now about five. Okay. Is there any weapons in the car? No. Yeah. So you work directly for Mary Marishi? Yeah. Well, I don't know her last name, but okay. I mean, I called her on Facebook. Mary. Okay. She needed help. Is this this guard. is Mary? No. What does she look like? She she looks younger than that. Yeah. So, Mary was the victim of a burglary last Thursday where a ton of people took her checks. Oh, wow. Isn't that weird? Now you have one of her stolen checks on you, and she did not authorize, nor has she ever heard of you in your life. Yeah, no, some lady. I mean, I, I, helped, I helped clean out this house and she has to clean it. So the more, the more cooperative you are, yeah. the easier this usually goes. Yeah. Guys, I just spoke with Mary for 10 minutes. Her house got burglarized. She's never heard of you in her life. You have to know that if we go to the dump, they have video. Yeah. So yes. if we also, obviously we're going to go to have to talk to her. I have, we already I have, have her receipt. statement saying that you, she doesn't know who you are. The officer continues interrogating the woman and asks how much she was paid. Debriana says she was paid $600 for her work, and the officer is surprised. Her story doesn't add up as she changes the number of days she worked from three to five. The officer asks if there are any weapons in the vehicle and Debriana says there aren't. Another officer emerges and shows Debriana a photo. He asks if the woman in the photo is Mary, and Debriana says she isn't. She claims that Mary is younger than the woman in the picture. The officer informs Debriana that the woman is Mary, and several people broke into her house and stole her checks. Debriana was in possession of one of the stolen checks, but claimed she didn't steal anything. The officer says Mary has never heard of Debriana in her life, they also state that the dump has video cameras, and they can check if she actually went to dispose of garbage from Mary's garage. The officers asked her to be straightforward and cooperate with them. Debriana was eventually arrested for receiving stolen property worth over $500. She can face up to a year in prison if convicted. Oh no, stay in there. Whose car is that? Oh no. You were sitting in the driver's seat. Listen, 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 I swear uh, I would, uh, hey, wait, I wouldn't see the driver's no, no, seat. No, 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 oh, I interrupt you, oh, man. The incident in this body cam footage occurred in Columbus, Ohio, on December 4th, 2021. Officers of the Columbus Police Department responded to a call from a man from Louisville, Kentucky. The man reported that his vehicle was stolen and he tracked it via GPS. The officers arrived at the location the man mentioned and observed a man stepping out of the driver's seat of the stolen vehicle. They decided to approach the suspect, but as they did so, he attempted to escape. Fortunately, the officers tackled the man and placed him under arrest. It's got a temp tag, but not the temp tag listed on the, on the uh, run. Is that your car, bud? No. Hold on. Stay in there. Whose car is that? I don't know. You were sitting in the driver's seat. Listen, listen, listen. I swear uh, I would. Uh, hey, wait. I wouldn't see the driver's no, 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 seat. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, I interrupt you. Oh, man. Several officers respond to a call from a man about his stolen vehicle. The man informs the officers that he has been tracking the car via GPS and gives them its current location. The officers arrived at the location and located the missing vehicle. They observe as a man steps out of the vehicle's driver's seat. The officers proceed to approach the suspect for questioning. The man asks the officers to listen and says he isn't in the driver's seat. He begins moving backward and eventually starts running. The officers pursue the suspect and waste no time in tackling him. The suspect claims to be innocent, but his actions prove otherwise. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Give me your hands. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Give me your hands. Stop my car. We'll talk to you in a minute. Give me your hands. Okay, wait, my shoulder. My shoulder. For real, for real, about for real, for real. This is. I can see what happened. Stop my car. Stop my car, man. Okay. Wait. Relax. Listen. I swear. Listen. It's not my car, bro. Give me your hand, bro. Come on, my car. Stop my car. 
We know it's not yours. It's a girl over here and you're saying what you said. I can tell you what happened. No, I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong at all. I can tell you what happened. I can tell you what happened. I didn't do nothing wrong, no. Can you shut it down? One on four, yeah. All right. So down to one point. What did I do wrong, though? I didn't do nothing wrong. There's a white dude, skinny white dude. He was talking to him, he wasn't in the car. What you mean? He was in the car, what are you talking about? See, when I approached you, we were gonna talk about it. Man, because I know how this goes. You talk, 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 talk about it, but you just sent me to jail, man. I didn't take that car. Somebody stole it, I didn't take that car. I spent that, I spent that dude with that car, man. Okay. The second officer's body cam footage shows the officer arriving on the scene just as the suspect attempts to escape. The officer follows the suspect and immediately tackles him. He instructs the suspect to stay down while the suspect says the car doesn't belong to him. The suspect struggles a bit, but the officer eventually places him in handcuffs. The officers inform him that they know the vehicle doesn't belong to him. They roll the suspect over while the officer who made the tackle picks up his shades. He removes several items from the suspect's pockets while backup arrives. The other officer asks why he didn't simply talk about it. The suspect says he thought they were going to take him to jail. He claims not to have stolen the car, and the officer continues searching his pockets. All right, we're gonna get you up. You ready? Stand up. Sorry, bud. I lost it. Come on. You mean, bud? Relax. Put your hands away. Okay. We, I just approached you to talk about it, man, and then you took off running. Look, my mom is right up the street, man. My mom is... Where do you live? It's right up the street, like, right, right up the street, man. It's still like hard, man. Nothing up in here? No. Oh, Stop it. Like, that hurt me. Hurt, Pig, man. I want to touch you. I hurt, man. All right. Get in the car. He's down too. I don't know what to do. I take no car, man. Okay, 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 can we talk about it then? We don't gotta shut Get in the door. Get in the car, bud. I did not take no car. Sit in the car. The officers inform the suspect they are going to place him on his feet. They put the suspect on his feet and continued searching for him. They find the suspect with narcotics and move him to the patrol vehicle. The officers notice there is something in the suspect's underwear and ask what it is. They ask if it is a weapon or dangerous item, and the suspect claims that it isn't. The officers allowed him to put his hand in his underwear to pull out the strange item. The suspect pulls it out and reveals he was keeping a pair of socks in his underwear. They ask if he has anything else in his underwear, and the suspect says he doesn't. They then placed him in the patrol vehicle and instructed him to sit properly. The suspect refuses to adjust his seating position, claiming he is innocent. He says he didn't steal the vehicle and swears on his mother. The officers said they understood what he was saying but instructed him to sit in the car properly. The suspect hesitantly does what he is instructed to do, and they shut the door. The officers arrested him for receiving stolen property. No? Yes. Yes. You're going to no, place under arrest. No, my there. No. For shoplifting, yes. No. You want to sign a complaint, you say, right? No, I'll give okay. it back to you. I'll give it right, back to you. All right, 21, they want to sign a complaint. We're going to have to give it back to you. I told you, still give me the shoes. I give it back to you. Give me the shoes. You didn't listen. That's right. I give it back to you. Give it back to you. The incident in this body cam footage occurred in Hoboken, New Jersey, on October 21, 2023. Police officers responded to a call from a store owner. They arrived at the store to find the owner waiting for them outside. The officers approach the suspect and are forced to arrest her for her crimes. They take her to the police department where she suddenly becomes irritated and begins insulting the officers. You called? Yeah. Okay, she's in here? Yeah. What did what she take? She stole the... Uh, you want to sign a complaint against her? Yeah, okay. she's waiting. She don't, wanna, she don't wanna give me the Uggs. The Uggs? Uggs, sure. You have video of it or no? You observed it? I have a video, but she's waiting, you know. Okay. All right, 21. The uh, females inside the Sparrow Wine and Liquor Store, uh, we also have the victim here. Two officers respond to a call from a store owner about a woman who was apparently shoplifting. The officers arrive on the scene and meet the store owner, who informs them that the woman is in the building. He says she stole shoes from the store, and he wants to file a complaint against her. He also informs the officers that he has video evidence of the incident. Stop. Uh, they want me to out of here. Come on, Alicia. 
Thank you so much. That's so mean. I have her. Solution I have the simple dollars. You're good. Come on. Damn, boy. The officer informs dispatch that the suspect and victim are present on the scene. He enters the store, and some employees direct him to the suspect. The officer meets the suspect, a 37-year-old woman named Alicia Noel, and escorts her out of the store. She begins struggling as they step out of the store, and the officers instruct her to calm down. But why they don't want to serve me? That's my doll. Do you have a bag back there? Uh, no, no, I'm not Where's the gold? God, man. Where'd you get those? They gave it to me myself. Come on, get off of me, please. You gotta Stop. relax. Stop. Get off of me, please. No. no. The store owner informs the officers that Alicia took her shoes and left hers inside. Alicia says the store owner is lying and he gave her the shoes. The male officer informs her they will charge her for shoplifting. So she took those off and put... Okay. All right. No, that's mine. Simply a lie. He gave it to me. All right, two five, show me. Alicia says she will return the shoes to the store owner. The officer takes the shoes and returns them to the store owner. He talks to another officer and instructs him to enter the store to get the owner's details and other video footage. No. Yes. Yes. You're gonna no, place under arrest. Over there. No. For shoplifting. Yes. No. You want to sign a complaint? You say right? No, I'll give okay. back to you. All right, 21, uh, they want to sign a complaint with that. I'll give back to you. They told you in the store, give me the shoes. I give back to you. You didn't listen. That's right. I give back. I give back to you. Give me the shoes. You didn't hear me. Okay, here. Yeah. They didn't want to give me the shoes. That's why. Right. I give to you. No. Here. Yeah. After all, yeah. after all, give me back. my shoes. Alicia informs the officers that her property is at a shelter. She asks if she can get her other items back from whoever is holding them. The female officer places her in handcuffs and searches her for dangerous or illegal items. She asks Alicia where her other items are, and Alicia says someone is with them at the shelter. You do me a favor. Um, they're get, we're gonna bring her up. Yep. Just go back with him. Uh, she apparently she might have left the property there. Okay. Just get his info, and if he has any other footage, she basically just took shoes, flip, took the shoes off, and put them on her feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The officers instructed Alicia to move to the patrol vehicle, but she refused because she wasn't wearing shoes. The female officer says she will get her shoes, along with the rest of her belongings, when they get to the police department. The male officer says she cannot receive the items at the moment because she is under arrest. Alicia asks why they made her return the shoes. No, not with our shoes. Come on, let's go. We're getting your shoes back. We're getting the property. We're going to leave all my listen, stuff, Listen, listen, the officers are going to get your property. They're going to bring it to headquarters and you'll have it all at headquarters. We got to put you... Whatever you have, your shoes and stuff you just said. No, I need my chocolates now. You're not getting them now, you're placed under arrest. But the thing is, why did I give back the shoes then? Because that's you their shoes, them. you okay, stole so them. Okay, gonna get mine back. You are gonna get them back, I just well, explained when? that to you. After we get you to headquarters. And the officers remind her that she stole them. He says she will get hers back when they return to the police department and instructs her to sit in the patrol vehicle. The officer says she shouldn't make things any worse because she will be released after being processed at headquarters. Alicia sits in the vehicle, and the officers enter. They then take her to the police department. All right, well, that's not happening. You're under arrest. Oh, I should have never give it back then. We were going to get it back regardless. But still, miss, that doesn't be fair. We can't steal stuff, miss. That's it. All right, Let us just process So I'm going to be All barefoot right. walking like this? You're not barefoot. You got socks on. Can I maybe put 10-12? sit in the car, please. Don't make this harder than it is. We're going to get up to headquarters, process you, and then release you. Good. Okay? If they release you, my bro, I'm going to f***ing wear a sack of okay. All right. Just put the seatbelt on it. The officers arrive at the police department with Alicia in custody. Alicia begins struggling as they take her to the building, and the male officer instructs her to calm down. He says his female colleague is simply trying to guide her through the building. Alicia proceeds to call the female officer ugly and asks why they have ugly officers working at the police department. Miss, easy, nice and easy, come on. She's just trying to guide you in, that's it. <clears throat> Just face the wall for me over there. Ugly, ugly, bro. How you got such an ugly person working? That is so ridiculous, bro. Right. She makes whole world look ugly. All right, go anyway. in with her, okay? Oh. Miss, she's got to search you, okay? I don't give a Put your hand on the wall. Oh, plus. 
Hey, you must talk about. We're gonna get it for you. I don't want my chocolate and I don't want some sauce. Okay, miss, please put your hand on the wall. Thank you. Can you put your hand on the wall? No, I can't. I know, because you're gay, so. No, I'm actually not. You look like you're dying. Yeah, well, I'm not. Apparently, you look like one. Spread your legs. I don't like doing that. Spread your legs. It's an order. Spread your legs. You're making it so difficult for no reason. Ow. The female officer proceeds to search Alicia, but Alicia doesn't cooperate. The male officer informs her that the search is mandatory, and she completes it. Alicia was eventually charged with shoplifting and remanded to the Hudson County Correctional Facility for incarceration. Well, that's all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more of our content. Don't forget to hit that notification button to get our updates. See you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.